All right, my friends, welcome back to All Cars. If you're new here, my name is John, and this week it is time for another Motor Week Retro Review Reaction. And this week, I have chosen the 2012 Buick Regal GS. Now, as you can imagine, I've done this for two reasons. The first is, I'm a big fan of the Regal. I was a fan of this one. Didn't love it. It had one critical flaw. I'm sure we'll get into it here in a minute. But specifically, because this is the Regal GS, I was actually looking for a Lexus GS to do a video of and saw this and was like, well, squirrel, I've got to do this one. So, as always, grab your beverage of choice. We've got some caffeinated this morning. And sit back, get comfortable in your chair. Let's take a trip not too long ago back to 2012. Motor Week is made possible by Rock Auto. When you hear the name Buick, the most likely words that come to mind are luxury, classy, and stylish. But the Buick brand also has a rich performance history filled with Wildcats, Grand Sports, and Grand Nationals. Now the century-old brand is once again offering its unique form of road-mastering performance with the new Buick Regal GS. General Motors introduced the mostly German-engineered Regal GS as a concept at Detroit's 2010 North American International Auto Show, and it piqued a lot of interest. So much so that only 20 months later, that concept has turned into the largely unchanged production 2012 Buick Regal GS. That includes snarly Euro chic sports sedan cues that instantly set the GS miles ahead of more garden variety Regals. There's the lowered ride height, twin port hood, swept back by Xenon HID headlights above a series of vertical slats and inlets, all flanking a still recognizable Buick waterfall grille. A ground-hugging front fascia turns to 19 or 20-inch five twin-spoke alloys and deep rocker panel extensions, past twin trapezoidal exhaust, and up to a rear spoiler, all making a perfect view for those left behind. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the styling here. And even though they're talking about, oh, this is the GS, look at how special it is, it, it, the same general body idea here is just the Regal. And... I do have a little bit of a mixed feelings. Generally speaking, I really liked it. In fact, when this car came out, I was uh, doing okay for myself. And being a fan of Regal, specifically, having had two, I was ready to get another one. And I really liked the look of this. Buick, at the time, and I would say still to this day, they're having trouble positioning themselves stylistically. They, they never look as good as Mercedes, BMW, or even Acura, but they do look more upscale than a Chevy. And that's kind of where this sits for me. I really like it. I don't love it. And if you compare it to something like an, an Infinity of the Time or, a, again, an Acura or anything else, it looks a little odd. I think the proportions, I think it's a little narrow. I, it, it, the proportions are off for me. The grill's not really big enough, and they, they added a lot of circular swoops, things like that, especially at the rear end, you can see, where the, the bumper rises up. So I think it's handsome. It certainly appealed to me when it was brand new, but I don't think it was beautiful. And I would like to say the headlights like, I, I'm glad that they're big, <laughs> but I get the impression that basically the instant you drove it off the lot, they immediately went cloudy. They they just, these I, I don't think I've ever seen one of these outside of a showroom that didn't have cloudy headlights. But way beyond the cosmetics, this sports sedan thrives with unique bits like a special GS version of Buick's interactive drive control system. Like on the Regal Turbo, IDC lets the driver select suspension and steering sensitivity. Here there are three modes, standard sport and an exclusive GS mode that increases steering effort and damping levels even further. 
Under the hood, the GS is packing an uprated Ecotec 2-liter direct-injected boosted four-cylinder with 270 horsepower, 50 more than the Regal Turbo, with an over-square 295 pound-feet of torque. Very impressive. It, and it, no comments, no, no problems with that engine. Um, again, not a mechanic. I'm sure those of you who have experience with it will let me know in the comments below whether the Ecotec... Ecotech is um, actually good and holds up, but just looking at the numbers, that's that's pretty solid. That is really, really pretty solid. And in a bold move, the Buick Regal GS is initially offered only with a six-speed manual transmission. Buick didn't want to dilute the GS, so a six-speed automatic will come mid-year. At the drag strip, the GS was indeed more Euro muscle than American. Launches were soft, and even with a turbo, the Ecotech has limited steam. Still a 0 to 60 of 6.8 seconds, and a quarter mile in 15.2 seconds at 94 miles per hour is a big improvement over the Regal Turbo. There was an almost total lack of torque steer, thanks to the front hyper strut suspension. Both the clutch and transmission lack sharpness, but linkage is smooth and gears well matched to the engine. But as you know, n nothing to complain about there. It, and, you know, when this car came out, it was very well reviewed. Um, but I don't think it ever got the appreciation that it really, really deserved. Um, again, I've got one critical flaw about it that kept me out of it. Um, but General Motors brought something over from Europe. It seems to be good. The technology seems to be good. The engine seems to be good. It's interesting that for the power, they said it runs out of steam. That's that's really interesting. And then they put a manual in. And doesn't that all absolutely scream? The, the struggle that GM had with the Buick brand. Well, while GM sold... Things like the Regal or the Park Avenue or the Electra or whatever it happened to be. And then they dropped the Grand National in the middle of that. This feels a little bit like that. Like there's no follow through. Are we going to be a sedate, premium, quiet American luxury? Or are we going to be more of a performance brand to stand up against, I hate to keep bringing them up, stand up against Acura or, you know, touch on BMW? It's just like GM came out with a product that, is really good, and then was like, eh, we're done. They never built anything off of it. Let's see what they say. With most Euro tweak sedans, the real entertainment is when you turn the wheels side to side. With the IDC set to GS mode, response is quick and sharp. The hyper struts again performed as advertised, managing handling forces and road shock while retaining reasonable steering feel. As speeds rise, so does composure. Body roll is minimized, but the effects of expansion joints is not harsh. The GS's Brembo four-piston front calipers brought this Regal to a stop in a super short 110 feet. Pedal reaction was firm and sporty, scoring high against recent German sports sedans we've tested. Wow. Um, okay, so this is... Uh, I, I, I've been moving these reaction videos to newer and newer cars. And so it's interesting to go back and watch something from the 90s or something from the 80s and then watch this result. For them to say that as speed rises, so does composure, I don't know I've ever heard them say something like that before, certainly not about a General Motors product. Um, really impressive. And that stopping is fantastic. And it's not just the distance, but... There's exactly zero drama. You press the brake, it stopped. I, I am absolutely blown away with how well this is going, honestly. I would say, when they were going through the slalom here, this, this trunk right here, the Buick logo with the chrome on either side, from a distance, that struck me as a really large Chrysler logo. But... This is this is special. This is reminding me why I liked this car so much. 
Taking a break, the interior of the GS is both sporty and still very much a Buick Regal. A flat bottom steering wheel and leather trim bucket seats greet front occupants with good support and plenty of legroom. The potty gauge cluster has a large round tack and speedo with coolant fuel and a multifunction display in between. When you activate the GS mode, gauge lighting changes from ice blue to a glowing white. The GS comes very well equipped with automatic climate controls and front seat heat. Our car sported the optional sunroof and audio navigation package, complete with 7-inch touchscreen. The screen is also the interface for Buick's IntelliLink, which matches up with smartphone apps for Pandora and Stitcher sites, as well as advanced OnStar features like Remote Start. One downside of European sports sedan style is a tight back seat, and the Regal is no different. It's okay for two adults, but not three. But the seat backs do fold, and the trunk at 14.3 cubic feet is very usable. And okay, so interior-wise, uh, you know I like my light and bright, but this was super comfortable, even in, uh, in the... with the caveat. In the, the dark trims, I think it looks fantastic. I, I really do until you start to look at the details and what i mean by that is something i'll mention at the end but like the gauges are clear but they're set in these pods right more like pontiac would do more sports sedan than regal the seats were comfortable the dashboard actually i think it looks really good but once you start actually staring at it, like it's just a mass of buttons. It's, I would say the ergonomics aren't great there. The back seat is what killed it. There's two things, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about them here. The first off, the back seat was small. For a Regal, this had the a back seat like a compact, right? It was a very small back seat. It was very uncomfortable, and for me, it was honestly a deal killer. The other thing was... The steering wheel. Now, they showed this guy getting in, and they had plenty of space between the top of his legs and the bottom of the steering wheel. I have sat in multiple of these and not been able to get comfortable. The seats were comfortable. The armrest, the gauges, everything was fine. It was lovely. But the steering wheel, even when I lowered the seat or lifted the steering wheel up, it hit my thighs. I don't know if I was missing something super obvious multiple times, or if this car was just built tight vertically. It, it was enough to keep me away from one of these. That's how much I was uncomfortable in the car from the steering wheel perspective. And it was small. And along with all this performance and comfort comes pretty good government fuel economy ratings of 19 city and 27 highway with premium gas recommended. Pricing for the top drawer 2012 Buick Regal GS is $35,310. For perspective, an Audi A4 Turbo starts at about three grand less. In recent years, Buick has reinvented itself as a younger, more polished premium brand, one that is even more popular abroad than at home. Now it's even more exciting to see that the performance heritage of this historic brand is also getting a proper addressing. The 2012 Buick Regal GS is a ball to drive, paving the way for more great road cars to come. Okay, so in conclusion, um, good looking, if not overly beautiful, and, and really, you know, they bring up the Audi there of which would you rather drive, which would you rather, rather walk out into the driveway and see? I, I'd rather see the Audi. This was not bad looking. It just was, it didn't do it for me. I guess that's what it boils down to. The second thing is, is that inside it was tight. It was small. I would not have bought the GS because especially for 35,000, I forgot it was that much. You could get an Audi for 3,000 less, granted base model, but I'd rather drive the Audi, which is why I would look at more base level or mid-level on this Regal. It's a shame it didn't catch on. It's a shame that it didn't take off. Honestly, I think it was inherently a good chassis and, and good suspension, good, good fundamentals. 
and it was ignored. Now, for me, I didn't find it terribly comfortable behind the wheel. And that boils down to, to me, this wasn't a regal. They could have called this anything in the world. They could have called it the Buick Cascada. They could have called it anything. But to me, it wasn't a regal. Regals, whether it was the 70s, whether it was the 80s, whether it was the late 80s, 90s, they were big, midsize, comfortable cars. And sure, they had performance options. This is not. This was not a midsize. This was a compact. I I don't know. I just... I wanted one because I liked the Regals. I liked Buick. And I really wanted to like this car. Enough that I was seriously considering one. But multiple attempts to look at them. And I just was... As much as I loved the fundamentals, as much as I loved the left brain, this is what's good, inherently good about this car. And I'm glad that they did it. I'm glad they were investing some effort into Buick. The part of me that wanted the Regal experience said this wasn't it. Let me know what you think below, guys. Thanks for being here.